Guys, we got some things we need to talk about here today in this video. The markets were down quite substantially today with the Nasdaq down almost 3%, S&P down 2.38%. 8%, the Dow down about 2%, and the Russell 2000 also down about 2%. Same time, the VIX is up 9.39% today. Let's talk about exactly what is going on, why we are dropping, kind of what to expect for tomorrow, because we have the biggest catalyst of this week tomorrow morning and that is the cpi report so we're going to get into that i also do want to talk about amc why the cost of borrow rates are still so high and the short interest is continuing to climb we now just hit over 20 four percent short interest of free float about 35 percent of the total shares out on loan so we're definitely uh, in a very interesting situation that I do want to talk about. So let's dive into it. If you guys find value out of this video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, source your comments, questions, or concerns down below in the comments section. But most importantly, thank you guys for tuning in. Get yourself free stocks. We both Mumu and public that is down there at your discretion as well as that. If you guys want to come trade with me live in real time, link down below in the pinned comments. We just hit 100% on a NASDAQ put that we've held for a couple days. And we also did just hit 170% on a spy daily for today that gives us some pretty nice protection for the downside if you guys you know don't want to just sit on your hands while the markets are falling i know that can be boring uh you know you want to come learn how to trade and potentially make a lot of money to the downside that's your way to do that but let's talk about exactly what's going on first and foremost i do want to talk about this because i think it is substantially important um you know to know heading into tomorrow and i think that's going to have some big implications for amc stock as well now it says european central bank confirms july rate hike plans raises inflation projection significantly and this is very big right the european central bank that's like uh you got the u.s and then i i, I like the ecb and you know bank of china those are like head in head right we do a lot of business with europe china's second largest economy so you have an interesting thing going on right now you have the markets really sporadic europe projects significantly higher inflation the feds says they want to get inflation down that they're confident they can get it down whole time we're not seeing inflation coming down seeing the price of oil through the roof heading into recession you know the markets are really disconnected where things should be valued and that's why you're seeing a lot of this volatility and this is definitely not a good thing but let's go ahead and read the key points it says annual consumer price inflation rose uh, rose across the 19 member euro area hit a fresh new high of 8.1 percent in may following its latest monetary policy meeting the governing council announced it intends to raise its key interest rates by 25 basis points at its july meeting policymakers face the challenge of reigning in inflation without compounding the economic slowdown resulting from the war in ukraine and associated sanctions so you know not good not good the whole world seeing this kind of inflation the whole world is slowing down we've never in history seen this and now we do have our CP cpi report that comes out tomorrow and a lot of people have talked about the cpi has been leaked at 8.9 percent um i have not seen anything actually confirming that but if it comes in you know substantially higher than expectations that's not going to be good the inflation rate year over year is expected to be eight 0.3%. If we come in substantially higher than that, that's going to be very, very bad. Same thing with the core inflation rate, right? It's expected to actually go up from, you know, 5.9% last reading to 6.2% for this reading. So there is, you know, a lot of negativity already around CPI. And that makes me somewhat bullish for the markets. But at the same time, the markets are still up from where they were, you know, during the highest level of fear, right? The uh, S&P is still about $21.50 higher than where it was at uh, down here just March 20th when we did hit that low at 380.54. So I do think there is some room to fall here. And if, you know, CPI comes in really bad, that's exactly what is going to happen. So keep that in mind. That's going to affect AMC just like that's what affect AMC stock as well today. This is basically a huge reason uh, for hedge funds or a huge um, you know, supporter of bad logic, we'll say it for hedge funds and their short thesis to go out and short stocks like AMC when bad news comes out because it's, it's, it's like people are not FOMOing into a stock, you know, if 
the broad markets aren't up a lot, then a lot of these stocks are not going to be up a lot as well unless they get, you know, some kind of good news. And that's kind of what AMC is waiting for right now is to really get some good news, something to run with. That's what we really need, in my personal opinion, to see this rally that I have been talking about. Nonetheless, could affect uh, AMC stock tomorrow, CPI, and how the markets react. But the short interest of free flow for AMC stock coming in today is at 24.06%. That is heading up again here today. 124 million shares that are now sold short. Cost bar minimum, 6.5%. Cost bar average, 30%. Cost bar max at 48.18%. And you're seeing about 5.21 million additional borrowed shares for the day. 100% share utilization. Days to cover sitting at 3.5, which is very, very high as well. Shares out on loan sitting at 185.18 million. The free flow out on loan sitting at almost 36%. So there are a lot of shares that are out on loan that can be used against us. At the same time, the option activity, that's exactly what you're seeing is, you know, a lot of shorting as far as actual shares. But these hedge funds are forcing the market makers to go out and short more and more and more AMC because of these close to the money uh, put options that they're doing. And when you factor in the premium, right, $20 minus 9.35 what's that going to leave you $10.70 per share well you know that's damn near an in the money put option right so not good not good it works like a reverse gamma squeeze and and that's very important to point out and we did have 16 orders totaling $2.98 million for the day, positive order value of 7%. So it just goes along the same logic that I already said. So there is that. As far as the Stocko Tracker data, let's go ahead and pull it up. I, I don't know about any kind of, you know, gamma squeeze if CPI is good or if AMC comes out uh, with a catalyst. That's going to be very bullish. And you could see one of those, you know, uh, mega bounces right that can happen on fridays that can happen on thursdays when there's very little time to expiration and there's a lot of options on the expiration you can see some of those moves we do have about eleven thousand contracts that are in the money on the call side heading into tomorrow and almost one hundred and fifty one thousand for out of the money calls uh heading into tomorrow now next week is also going to be a very important expiration uh much more important than this actual week and we already have ten thousand three hundred twenty two calls that are in the money and three hundred and fifty thousand calls that are out of the money and even down the line july 15th looks like it's going to be a big day as well we have 370 thousand calls that are already out of the money and then 8300 calls that are currently in the money very very large ratios between out the money calls to in the money calls so what that means is you're probably going to see more buying pressure than not when the stock does start to go up and especially break out of key levels now if we go ahead and take a look at the max pain this is actually very very interesting for tomorrow the max pain is 13 dollars per share around where we are currently sitting at right now we're at 12 dollars 78 cents per share and if we look at the max pain for next week that is at 18 dollars per share so that would be a pretty substantial move to the upside that would actually make my calls uh come back to life so we'll see if that happens that's definitely playing out uh around the max pain for this week so we will see on that but you know i i still expect that rally and you know 18 dollars. i mean that would be a pretty substantial rally uh for a week but i do think we could go higher than that if we we're talking about approaching 18 i think there's no reason we couldn't break out of say 20 now we take a look at the technical analysis guys i know it feel, feels like we've just been falling but we really have not done anything over the past month ever since may 12th where we did hit the low at nine dollars 70 cents per share intraday and then we did end up closing at eleven dollars 20 cents per share all the way up here you know we really haven't done much we've been in between you know 10 30 on the low end range and you know 16 dollars on the high end range but a majority of the time we're in between you know 14 and 12 for a majority of the time as of the last couple of weeks so we, re we really have not done much keep that in mind i think it's a better thing than not a lot of stocks have been continuing to trend to the downside uh but i think there's an argument here that amc is not really that overvalued company like it once was if you're buying amc right now you're probably buying it for the squeeze but at the same time it's not a bad buy on a fundamental basis if amc continues to follow through with all of their plans that they have set out so that's that 
kind of my, my thoughts and just to put it into a little perspective if we do break out of cpi is good and you get this risk on sentiment in the markets you want to break out above 1550 that is the 50 day moving average 100 day moving average at 16 dollars 40 cents per share those will be the key levels to be watching for the rsi is trading at 47.03 so a little bit on the oversold side and the macd is surprisingly still very very bullish but volume has been low for a while now and i think that's ultimately you know a, a bullish thing in my opinion once volume comes back into the stock and you see one of these ramp up like volume effects then the price of the stock is also going to go up and i do think it's going to be a lot harder for for hedge funds to service their margin calls this time around especially given what the markets have been doing all markets have been performing very very negatively so that is pretty much all for this video if you guys found value out of it hit the like button subscribe to the channel source your comments questions or concerns down below in the comment section we will actually be live in between 8 p.m and 9 p.m here today i want to try doing it a little bit earlier even though we did last night uh so come join us come ask your questions uh that's pretty much it though make sure to get your free stock down below i think i said that if you guys want to come trade with me live in real time link down below in the pinned comments we do have some really good trades on right now that i'm very excited for heading into tomorrow so thank you guys for watching and i'll see you in the next one